Hey, so you only need red, blue, and yellow to mix every color on the spectrum, right? You just need those three colors and that's it. And you can make, mix any color you want with red, blue, and yellow, right? Well, maybe not. This is Tim here from timgonier.com, your place for online painting lessons. And today I wanna to talk about mixing color and a little bit of color theory. So the idea is that you can just take red, blue, and yellow and mix any color that you want. Uh, that could be true, but it depends on what red, what blue, what yellow, and that's the important part. Before I get into that, just want to let you know I'm doing a four-week course on color theory, color mixing, and creating color charts on my website. The link to that is down in the description below. If you want to join that, um, it's going to be four weeks interactive on Zoom, as well as videos that you can keep forever. Uh, on color mixing and how to create your own color charts. We'll cover everything from difficult landscape greens to skin tones. All right, so make sure you go sign up for that. Now we'll talk about some color. So when it comes to red, blue, and yellow, depending on what red, what blue, what yellow, you might actually be mixing complementary colors together accidentally. Not necessarily direct complements, but subtle complements. So I'm gonna have you look at my palette here. I'm gonna mix some colors together and we're gonna talk about that. All right, so I've got my red, my blue, and my yellow. And just to be specific here, I have ultramarine blue, which is a very common blue, cadmium red medium, which is a very common uh, red, and then cadmium yellow medium, very common yellow. So you would expect um, to get your secondary colors, you'd mix your blue and your red to get purple or violet, and then you'd mix your uh, blue and your yellow to get green, right? So then from there, your secondary colors, you can mix in your tertiary colors and then go on and on and on. Well, let's just try the blue and red. So the blue, ultramarine blue, and then red, this should make a good violet, right? So we'll take that, mix this in. A little more blue, let's even it out. All right, so that's kind of not really violet. All right, we've got a purple here, but it's very uh, muddy purple. So if I wanted to create a nice vibrant violet color, this is pretty muddy. So if you look at this, um, why is it so muddy? All right, so the reason being, uh, cadmium red and blue make an okay purple, but it's a little bit muddy. So why is it muddy? Well, our cadmium red isn't actually pure red. It actually leans towards orange. So if, red, if we mix red and yellow together, we get orange, which is a secondary color. And this red actually leans a little bit towards that orange color. So what happens when you mix orange and blue? It's a complementary color and you get usually brown or gray. So when you mix complements together, they make, can make some great colors for your paintings, but if there's some subtle complements between two colors, you're never gonna get a pure mix. Um, you're gonna get a muddy mix. Not a bad one, but you might just say, why isn't my color more vibrant? Well, it's because you have some complements in there fighting each other a little bit and creating a muddier color. All right, so we can take our blue, we'll just mix our blue and our yellow together. So if we take our blue and yellow, we should get a decent green. Oh, again, a little bit muddy. And again, the blue leans a little bit towards our red. Um, and our yellow here, cadmium yellow medium, actually leans a little bit towards orange. It's kind of, um, if yellow is like right here, cadmium yellow medium is a little bit to the left of it, a little bit more orangey um, in hue. Not a lot, but just enough to make your green not quite pure green. Uh, that's why greens can be really difficult to mix, is just because there's so many color biases between colors. All right, so lastly, we will take a little bit of our red. and our yellow, and we should get orange. And you can see we've got the most vibrant color um, out of all of these. We've got a nice 
strong orange color here. Uh, and that's because both of these colors lean into this orange color. So you're not, you're not hitting any subtle compliments. You're getting a nice, bright, vibrant color. So when there's not little subtle compliments within your color, you get much more strong, uh, powerful colors. All right, so you can't just take any red, any yellow, any blue and mix every color that you want. So how do you fix this and how do you know what colors to use? Well, it's a lot of learning and it can be complicated, but you have to learn about each color that you're using. What way does it lean? Um, how pure is it uh, in comparison to like pure blue or we'll call it primary blue, primary red, etc. So um, if you don't learn about the colors that you're using, you might run into problems like this with your mixing. So I highly suggest come take my color theory and mixing workshop uh, starting here in a couple of weeks. Link again is in the description of this video. Um, or just subscribe to my channel. I'll be doing more videos on color mixing and I'll start talking about some of the solutions to uh, mixing your colors when you you want to get a nice pure color, but you're getting something really muddy. Uh, let's fix that. Let's let's get those colors a little bit more, more pure. That doesn't mean that you can't take those muddier colors, especially in landscapes. Uh, you can't. You can take those colors that have those subtle complements and make really nice landscape colors. You just need to kind of know what you're shooting for when you mix colors. I hope that was interesting for you. Uh, if you have any questions, post them in the comments down below. I'd love to help you out with that. And again, make sure you check out my website timgunyer.com for all your online painting lesson needs. Thanks for watching everyone and I'll see you again soon.